Okay, then I'd like to call to order this meeting of the Whiteley Select Board on May 2nd. Uh, just so that everybody knows, uh, at about 7:25, we're gonna re we're gonna um, have a recess in the meeting. We'll have a special town meeting at starting at 7:30. Should not expect it to be long with four short articles on it. Uh, and then if we have any more business, we'll come back after that meeting into session for the select board meeting. Okay. Um, so the first thing on our agenda is to review and vote to approve the meeting minutes from April 11th. Does anybody have any uh, comments, additions, amendments? No comments. To make to the no meeting minutes. Okay. To approve minutes. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Great. The vendor and payroll warrants were included in the packet. Does anyone have no uh, comments? Anything on those? Okay. Uh, public comment. This is now the time to listen to comments from the public related to items not listed on the agenda. And I know we have at least one person who wants to have some public comment. I'd say just speak up loud because I'm getting old. Sure. I think they're on the agenda. They're on the agenda. Oh, they're on the agenda. Yeah. Oh, you're on the agenda. Oh, okay. Is there anybody who's not on the agenda who would like to have something to say at uh, at this time, not public? Oh, I see Adelia's hand is up. Adelia. Go ahead and unmute yourself and. I'm just watching. Hmm? Go ahead. No, I I'm didn't... just watching. You just walked in. Okay, so you don't have your hand up. You're not look. You're not having a question. That's okay. Oh, that's the cursor. That's the cursor. That's that's the hand cursor. Okay. Let's <laughs> get the cursor off of Adelia there. There we go. Because it did look like, and yeah, we got to put up the light. All right. Okay. There's a real pandemic era sort of um, <laughs> my boo boo. All right. I'm looking at the at the Zoom. I don't see any questions there. I don't see anybody wanting to say something here. Let's move on to schedule appointments. First is Mariana Massad. 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 Yeah. Uh, to discuss tree cutting practices. Yeah, so I'm here to discuss. I'm sorry, could you give me your address, please? It's uh, 141 Conway Road. Thank you. Yeah. Sorry to interrupt. That's fine. Um, I'm here because um, I believe that trees are important to our town and community and for the sensible climate practices, um, such as carbon, carbon sequestration, shade, canopy, wildlife habitat, biodiversity, and land preservation um, from, you know, erosion and other, other um, natural events. Um, I believe that we should keep all the trees that we have in the ground, uh, but especially our large and mature trees. Um, if they are removed and a new one is planted in its place, it takes about 45 years for that tree to actually um, sequester the same amount of carbon that the tree that was taken down. So I know that I, I believe in replanting trees, but just for it's, it's all in perspective. So I believe that the mature tree should be left in the ground. And my concern is that I noticed that trees are being cut down, and particularly on Williamsburg Road. Um, I walk on Williamsburg Road quite a bit. That's sort of my, um, not daily walk, but sometimes daily. Um, walked it mostly this winter without the snow. And I notice, uh, I'll tell you what I see. Uh, I walk down, I don't know if you've gone there, but it's a beautiful spot. I start walking from the uh, reservoir and I walk up and the streams on both sides of me. Um, on this time of year right now, you can't even, you can't really hear yourself because they're so loud. And I get up to the top of Gray's, um, Grass Hill. There's not much going on there as far as tree cutting is concerned. There are some trees that are... Hmm? Yeah, I'm not on Grass Hill, but I go up to, to where Grass Hill is and then I start walking on Williamsburg Road. But... Um, there's not much tree cutting there except natural causes of trees coming down. Um, it's, it, this is my viewpoint. I don't know exactly what's being done because I'm not there every time. But I stop walking and I see these wood chips alongside of the road, piles of wood chips. 
all alongside the road. So I know that there's some tree cutting going on. And if you look at it, you know, you can see that there are 15, it looks like 15 foot swaths on each side of the road that have been cleared. And, um, and it's upsetting to see that, that that many trees are being cut down there. Now I know with the last storm, uh, then there's no trees there. They're just wood chips. There are no logs. There are usually anyway. But I know if I saw trees, uh, logs there, I know, okay, they've been cutting. But I'm just assuming that there's been activity there. Now, of course, with this last storm, there was a, quite a few trees that came down. But um, those logs uh, were kept. You can see those around at the various places on the, on the road. And you continue down and it's the same thing. You just keep going down till you get to a to a, a wetland, like a swamp. And even the brush has been cleared on that at both sides. And as soon as you get into Williamsburg, um, the, they, they handle it differently. You can notice it immediately. There's a tree canopy and you walk in, you walk there and they come in there. They had a lot of, quite a few trees fall. <laughs> Maybe, well, maybe three or four, so what I can tell. And um, they cut them, push them to the side, push the branches to the side, and boom, they're gone. They leave. So um, I guess I'm concerned because I, I guess I don't know why we're cutting on watershed property. Um, and and because it's it's by stream beds, it's, I don't know what the, um, what is it, the river protection, um, rule holds true for cutting um, in, in, in pristine um, watershed areas. I mean, that's a protected area. They don't even let us walk in there. Um, and they do let the snowmobiles go there, but they don't let us walk there. And so I'm concerned about cutting. Right, and there's no power lines there. And I guess my point, you know, what I believe in is that what is the tree is going to fall, right? That that's we know that. You know, if you plant a tree, it's going to fall sometimes. You to pick and choose which tree is going to fall because it's rot, it, it's it looks like it's dead or it is dying, and you know, it could fall. Um, and there, you know, for various reasons. I I, don't, I just don't see the logic in that. Um because what you know is that a tree is going to fall. Um, so selecting them because they possibly might fall, um, you know, is, is something that I don't, I don't just don't believe in. Um, uh, but let's consider the solar panels. I'm also interested in keeping the trees in, in, in Wakely, but my, my particular focus is Williamsburg Road. But let's look at the um, solar panels that we have. Those solar panels, it's like in one area, they're set up, they, they do their job for the environment, they provide, um, they suck up the energy from the, you know, from the sun. And I sort of like consider that like it's an oasis. Like we, the town felt like that was an important piece of keeping our environment clean. And I feel like that's like an oasis to me. You know, that's, that's a good thing. Then I look at other oases in the in the town. Now it, the town is seventy percent forest, which which is shocking to me, but it is, and but most of it is privately owned. So those are little reserves, little oases that we 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 need to have in order for us to keep our climate, our atmosphere clean, and sequester calm, carbon and so forth. And so Williamsburg Road is one of those areas. Lower Conway Road is one of those areas as far as, I mean, I'm sure there are others, but I don't know what they are because that's where I live there. That there's no cutting in Lower Conway Road, and I don't know why. But anyway, so in those 11 trees that were cut, those white pines that were mature white pines that were cut down at Hurley Hurl, 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 Hurl. Park, um, they were that that to me I consider that like an oasis that was it was like a nice oasis of trees doing their job for us for, to to help us um, clean the environment clean the air 
And um, I know I've talked to people about why they were cut down. I know there were reasons and so forth, but I, I feel like that um, we should all be thinking about this um, when decisions are being made, you know, about our environment in the town. Um, Um, you know, so I have many questions, you know, some of them have been answered. I, I did speak to Keith on, 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 on occasion, and he, he helped me, you know, he answered my questions, but I, I still feel very concerned about what's happening. Um, Can you, uh, do you have some more questions? we got like a few more minutes with you here. Well, my main interest is learning the uh, rational and, and considerations that are of what, when, and why a decision is made to remove a tree especially along Riverside, uh, Williams, Williamsburg Road. Um, I mean, and I believe that the public interest, in, that there is public interest for participating in these kinds of, um, you know, providing input to uh, white lease practices of tree cutting and policy. So I'm recommending that an advisory committee be formed, uh, but I, I'll, I, I'm just, that's what I'm thinking, but I'm, leave it up to you to, to think about what, what would be the best way to handle this, because I do think we should be thinking about it a little bit more um, strategically and focused with focus. focus. Would you, is it appropriate to ask you and or Keith to share some of the answers that perhaps you had to yeah. in particular I, questions? Yeah, I know I'm familiar with why the Hurley heat trees are taking down. Less familiar with why American the Williamsburg Road trees. A little light on some of the areas. One of the areas that where the where there's no canopy covering the road. That's that was cut by the city of Northampton on that property. They use it for log landings. As they cut their trees, mm. um, there's two spots where they where they are along the side mm. of the Williamsburg Road where they okay. have historically stacked logs. When they cut the trees themselves. Is that where it goes up to where the Sabin guy lives? Just camp? as you're traveling towards Williamsburg, just beyond Dry Hill, which is where Sabin is. Yeah, just okay. one spot. That's right. And then as you travel further out, just before you go down towards the swamp on the left hand yeah. side, is a yeah. big wide open okay. area that, again, they, the city of Northampton uses for that for a log landing. Are these the areas that you're concerned about, or are there other areas? No, there are other areas. Yeah. Yeah. So there's yeah. swamp, swamp. There's no canopy swamp. because there's no. no there's a trees. swamp along the side of the road. And Keith talked to Mariana about. Are you Keith? Yes. Yes. Did, didn't you talk to her about that? Fifteen feet. Is that the trying to prevent yes. trees from falling onto the road? No, it's nothing to do with a swamp. The the area where I didn't where say that. I said swamp. Oh, oh, I you said swamp. I heard swamp. I heard too. swamp. I did too. Well, <laughs> Yeah, so the acoustics are not the, so good. Within our layout, it's my responsibility as tree warden to protect the safety of the traveling public. And I know you don't agree with me in the aspect that a, de a dead tree or leaning tree that is leaning, and I know it's going to come across the road, should be cut down before it does pub public property damage to somebody or hurt somebody or have them kill somebody. I know you would prefer it be left. We also have issues where many nights we get phone calls because a tree has come down across the road in the middle of the night and we have to call out employees and pay them overtime money to go do. And again, when I had this conversation with you, you felt that that really wasn't an issue. Well, I, I, I tend to disagree with you because it's an expense to the town of Waitley that can be taken care of during the, and the only trees that were being cut on Williamsburg Road are trees that were in the tree warden's determination were hazardous trees that were leaning and dead trees that were going to come down across the road. As it is, for whatever reason, and I've contacted the city of Northampton, there is a, a tremendous amount of carnage amongst their own of the trees in this that are owned by the city of Northampton, mm -hmm. the storm damage out there this past year has been horrendous. 
And so a lot of the piles of chips that you're seeing is, is a response of us having to go out there and cut trees that were coming down across the road in the last few storms this, this year. It's horrible. I don't like to cut any more trees than I absolutely have to. I don't want to cut trees. I got other things to do, but when the roads are closed and we can't get through, we have yeah. really no, you know, I, I understand what you're saying and we don't just go out and pick trees to cut for no reason. Well, I was there one day when I was, they were walk, working on a tree that was being cut. It's It seems like- When you say they, was the city of the city? No, the city of the city of the our work, the workers, um, and you know, you know, I asked them why they were cutting the tree, uh, and they said that it was dead. That was dead. Look up here on top; it's a dead tree. So um, anyway, it's. But there was fifty. Why do we have to have fifteen feet across on each side of the road? Because that's basically what it is. 15. There's trees that are a lot closer than fifteen feet in the road. Yeah, but the, oh, yeah, you it's a clear that, spot. But, the swap. but that may that but, may be the city that of stops at the Williamsburg line. But so how does Williamsburg get away with not the area where, the, where it's wide open? Right. It's being done by the city of Northampton on their property. But that's the, but no, that's, we're not talking about the land use, right? Yeah. No. Well, can I can I offer uh, something, Mariana? Um, I live up in that area too. I live on Lower Conway Road, and I'm also quite familiar with Williamsburg Road because I walk it frequently. Um, would you like to take a walk with me, and we can and you can point out the areas that you're concerned about, um, mm -hmm. so that I have an opportunity to see them, and then we can come back and bring the discussion. Yeah, I'd like because I, I think it, it is important to determine what we have control over and what we don't. Right. Yeah, I'd be um, happy to do that because I have noticed some areas where there are a lot of trees down, but they seem to be the areas, in my observation, that would be the city of Northampton taking them down. Perhaps. Well, there are clear cuts back in there, no doubt. Yeah. But well, would you like to take a walk with me and we'll, I don't know, sure. bring like a camera, we can note things and then. I think can, all of you should come. I mean, I, I, any people that, that are interested should come and take a look yeah. at it. Brian should come. I mean, I think it's an important piece of information. I'd be happy to be the representative because I think everybody, yeah, we everybody have to, wouldn't be. We have to post a meeting if more than two of us yeah. go to that yeah. event. But I'd be happy so to do that because I live up in that area. I'm oh, sorry, if two or two yeah. or, or more. No, no, another yeah. question I have though is I think there's a state law that says that if you have to cut, if you cut trees, there has to be a notice to the public in writing. Before you cut the trees. Now, I don't know. I don't know. I'm just saying, I think. I believe. So I know there was a state law that states that. Why? Well, I, I don't know. We have to adhere to it. But in chapter 87 of the Master No Laws, what covers the public shade trees, and under section five, I believe it is, is the area where the tree warden can remove hazardous trees without hearings. When we normally cut perfectly healthy trees, we have hearings. And we and in many cases they have to be joint hearings with a planning board on the scenic roads. I know that when the Masons yeah. cut trees up in the back of where we live, we get a public notice in our mailbox. We have we says. have we do that. We have public hearings okay. right. but I guess also um I don't know why we're cutting the trees down there because there's very little traffic. There's no wires down there. There's nothing there that, and it's, I guess it's the river protection too, or stream protection. We can't, you can't, you know, we can't, when we bought our house, we uh, did a renovation. We couldn't, we had to abide by um, the um, river protection rule. Mass heritage. Mass heritage because we were so close to West, West Brook. So I don't know why we're doing, we're so close to these pristine watershed well, water that's supposed to be for, you know, mm -hmm. the city of Northampton. Yeah. And we're it sounds like there. we need to look into it a little bit more. Okay. Yeah. There is somebody else who wants to make yeah. a comment. I, think I she's have also emailed from, my contact. Here. From your part of town-ish. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Cynthia, go ahead. I just want to clarify, you guys are talking about Williamsburg Road. Is that Nash Hill? I think it's it becomes Nash Hill halfway up. 
Okay. I just want to make sure we're talking because I want that for a long time. Um, anyway, I just want to make sure we're talking about yeah. in place. Yeah. I, I have a very, I have a different perspective than you, and I do walk that area, and I am, in, I am from that part of Waverly, so um, it yeah. doesn't sound like it needs more investigation mm -hmm. because Northampton owns so much of that land. Yeah. They own. Yeah. I live off of Laurel Mountain Road, and they own so much land around me, but there's also a ton of land that's privately owned. Mm -hmm. And so I think some of which is logged, mm -hmm. some of which is, um, but Northampton, they cleared out near the water treatment plant off of where Grass Hill and Laurel Mountain intersect. And you go way back that down that road mm -hmm. um, that didn't use, well, it's a path really. They cleared out, I'm going to say, like two or three acres of trees. So Northampton's doing a lot of stuff that Waitley has no control over, even though it's in Waitley. <clears throat> right, but we have control over what we're doing in Waitley. Right, and we need, we need a, li a little better idea of what it is that you've observed that we have control over mm -hmm. and what you've observed that we don't have control yeah. over. So I, I'd like to wrap this up because we have more on our agenda. Yep. It sounds like the next action is a walk with our yep. new selectman's representative to the tree. I'll bring a camera. The tree committee. <laughs> um, the, the unofficial tree committee. Um, and I just, I, I welcome more involvement. And, you know, if, yeah. if we, um, I think the more we talk about and understand where people are coming from, the better off we're going to be. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, that's fine. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, thank you for coming thank in you. and yes. and Public bringing this up. Is a good thing. Yeah. yeah, and and we're keeping you in mind for a committee next time we have an opening. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I'm afraid of. Cultural <laughs> Council is an easy one. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Good. Okay. We see now another vacancy on Cultural Council. We're going to keep you in mind. Okay. Thank you. All right. Okay. Um, next appointment is Stu Mullahan to talk about the Mother's Day Half Marathon and to request a one day. I, I would. I, it's a half day marathon, but it's a whole day alcohol license, right? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yes, Just, uh, Run like first, said, drink later. That <laughs> is right. Run first, drink later. So it's really going to be a half day, but we're going to get St. Patrick's Day road race. Right, <laughs> no, right. Okay. Um, so, yeah. Would you be willing to like come up to the front row? Because I think if the camera will catch you better and I'll be able to hear you better. Sure. Thanks. Right. Yeah, so it's basically the same as it had been in prior mm -hmm. years. Um, it's in Proctor and Company again. Um, and we have all, yeah. all of their paperwork and they just pour after the race. And I'm pretty sure it's never gone past 115 mm -hmm. by the time they're wrapped up. And uh -huh. everything's everybody's gone. So the majority of my runners and participants are off the premises, usually by 12. Okay. Um, and you don't have any objection to the, the conditions that we've had in the last couple of years, the, uh, just the clearly marked boundaries on the alcohol serving area and the entrances, exits uh, to be monitored. Yep. We um, make, those were, we make one entry and we have yeah. someone there and they give bracelets and all yeah. the bits are marked. And, yep. Yeah. Um, what is the route of the half marathon? Is that the one that comes up Conway Road and goes... It, it starts at Yankee Candle, okay, and it goes up by the Waitland, yep, all the way to Mountain Road, yep, down Depot Road, uh -huh. and it goes through Hatfield, of Cronin Hill, and down King Street, and then it gets on Main Street, which turns into River Road, all the way to the Blue School, and then it ends in the uh, Highway Department, oh, the, the ball field. So they don't go. They're not a West Waitley. So they're not a West Waitley. Yeah. They're, they're yeah. No, you're the like my they're, church. You're uh, that's yeah, in, yeah, in that's the more, the more or less part. flat yeah. parts of yeah. Waitley and Hatfield. Yeah. More or less. Oh, the easier go to the parts. parts. Yeah. 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 Bottles, the that's that's yeah. the hilliest yeah. part. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Started. We need to. Yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah, I and, and I assume they've got all the sign-offs or are in the process of getting all the sign-offs. So do we, would we need to make them 
a motion contingent on uh, the other department signing on. Um, have you had John uh, John Hamm signed off? He did sign off. Uh, no, did not yet. No, yeah, no, no. no. So, we only have. Uh, so yes, we only have scams and the and the police department. I don't know okay. why you're dragging the feet, but okay. Uh, but then, and a reminder: email just went out yesterday. Yeah. Yes. Okay, yeah. hey, need your approval. So, all right. okay. I move that the select board approve the uh, Western Mass Mother's Day half marathon one day alcohol license contingent upon other um, well, stakeholders also well, approving it. Oh, I, I think you should probably do them separately. Oh. A motion on the yeah. on the, on uh, the, event? the one day license and then on the event, probably. Okay, because okay. the one day license wouldn't be contingent on. Okay. Oh, wouldn't well, okay. be on their approval. Oh, so if you don't get approved, you're just going to go there. Right. You can set up right here. To drown your sorrows. Okay. Yeah. okay. I guess I, you know, so long as you. you... I'll take half and you take half. <laughs> oh, sure. Go. All righty. I move that we, uh, contingent upon approval from the other stakeholders, that the select board approve the Western Mass Mother's Day half marathon. Second. second. Oh. oh. <laughs> Sorry. It's still your second. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 And I move we approve a one day alcohol license. Second. Okay. For, so, for the, so just for wine and malt. Just so that would clear. It's, okay. it's a for wine and one day for alcohol, wine, wine and malt license. Wine and malt license. Yes. Okay. okay. For May 14th, 2023. And I a second over here. Yeah. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Very good. Thank you. Thank you for coming in and uh, thank you for all your work on this for Hansel Connection. Right keep you running? No, I'm doing it. Yeah, yeah keep running. running to my phone to sign off as my approval. Oh, <laughs> oh like, all right. We got, we got the highway department's approval. Okay. Okay. All right. So let's right. move along. Thank so you we're, very we're much. Done. Thank, thank you. you. Um, under COVID nineteen, we just have the just get the news out. Tests are available. We got rapid tests stacked up on the door, the table in the doorway, uh, the town office. Uh, there's some at the library. There's some at the police station. They're still free. Um, so get them if you need them. Uh, down on the old business. Um, I've got. Uh, under old business A to discuss the condition of the center school roof and possible steps to better preserve the building. So maybe Brian, you can, or who would be the person to talk to that? Um, I can speak on it a little bit, uh, Donna. Can, if it was this was a uh, I'll blame Donna for the idea. <laughs> so, okay. Um, All right, I'm writing Donna Wiley down here. Um, okay. But it was yeah, it was sparked by uh, the, the, the conversation between Donna and I about the you know the condition of the roof. And the idea that you know possibly CPA funds could be used to mm -hmm. preserve the building, and um, it was I guess that I guess that's the question that that was hoping to be posed to the select board whether mm -hmm. that's something that they would uh, support or not. I guess sort mm -hmm. of tentatively. Um, did I get that right, Donna? Uh, mostly. <laughs> uh, I, I I I think. Um, the situation is that everyone um, who's looked at the building, none of us being specialists, believe that the roof is probably the biggest wild card since the mm -hmm. town has put nothing into <laughs> helping the roof for 108 years. 108 yeah. years, yes, rounding. Um, and in fact, after Brian and I talked, I had a conversation with Keith that, that made me even more gloomy because Keith, Keith, just correct me if I've gotten it wrong, believes that the issue is not just the slate, but the actual supporting roof ridges and joists. Um, so I had said, suggested to Brian that um, we might ask somebody from the Mahar firm, which is the very best slate firm, just to come and look at the roof and tell us what they think. When one of them came to look at my house, they didn't charge, you know, they're very reputable. Um, they did a little bit of repair that we needed done on the town hall roof. And um, I mean, a lot of people know that they're the best folks around. Uh, so that was really it, not to make a commitment to do anything, but just that we as the owners ought to have more information about that part of the building. And if, oh, we, can get it, if we can get it at no cost, that seems good. 
I like the price tag on that. Yeah, like yeah, free. yeah. Free information is always good. Yeah. Um, I don't see any reason not to get the information. Um, and that's my it. It's it's my hand, right? My hand. I think it, I thought it was it, maybe it is Mahan. I apologize. I've been out of town and I should have looked it up because I have his card someplace. Uh, Keith is there. Keith, do you know? I don't know the pronunciation, but I, uh, we can we can figure it out. And right, I I mean we're talking about the people who did all of Dartmouth College's roofs, a lot of roofs at Amherst College. They know roofs. <laughs> no. Okay. Um, but there, Donna, the town has done things in the in, in years recent. Well, when I say recently, in in the last thirty years, maybe nothing. But prior to it, certainly, the town did do things to try to help the slate in the aspect of um, if they were the slate was treated um, by by spraying. By I can't remember what it was, but uh, they, they have been. Attempts to prolong the slate. Oh, I they, didn't know that. Sorry. But the, the biggest issue with the slate, which we know is um, its original from 1904, 1908, somewhere 1910, I think, right? 1910. 1910, yeah. So it, it's, it has served its functional lifespan in that aspect. Um, so the slate that is there, it's very soft, it's very porous. Mm -hmm. And um, that is one of the problems with it. Um, but yes, um, you're right, Donna, there's also other structural issues on the rafters and the roof itself and the plate that is given away. So, and, um, and whatever we do with this building, if we want to sell it, we should not be allowing it to deteriorate because water is coming in from the roof. Um, and, mm -hmm. and Brian is right. It would be, I mean, this is another whole step and would require, you know, many people agreeing, but we could use CPA money to repair any part of the building. We certainly couldn't use it to repair all of the building because we don't have enough money to, to cover that cost. Um, Right. But, um, CPA is sold this, to somebody else because it's a historic building, it might qualify for CPA funding. Yeah. Yes, yeah. that's right. That's right. And the tax credits and the other things we've talked about, but the town doesn't need tax credits. No. Um, so, yes. Okay. Just now. And, and Keith, uh, Keith, yeah. For some of this, would CPA funds be available to replace the roof or simply to, for? restoration of existence. Oh, to replace in like kind, sure. I, okay. I mean, hypothetically, it would be better if we were Boston and had their CPA budget. <laughs> but yes, yes, to replace in like kind, yes. Okay, so no, in, some, in some instances, it can't be used to repair. Right. That's right, it, can't, it cannot be used simply to repair and you have to really read the details about what is eligible. It can definitely be used to replace with like material. I mean, for example, if town hall, if some of the clabbered had rotted, you know, clabbered is just wood. We could have replaced the wood with it, but, but yeah. didn't need to. But it's replacing yeah. with the like, we couldn't replace it with, with the, like material. Uh, yeah, we couldn't replace it with um, vinyl and use CPA money. Yeah. Okay. So it sounds like we've got the action item for that. Okay, thank you very so, much, Don. Thanks. So I'll Bye talk to Keith, Brian please. and Keith about that. Keith. Goodbye. Enjoy your meeting. <laughs> oh, thanks. Thank oh, come, come stick around. Bye. It's okay. It's okay. Because okay. <laughs> we're about to come, come back. We're about to pay for Lee Park here. Okay. All right. So on to our Good. next item is uh, to discuss and vote toward the contract for paving at Hurley Heath Park. Not the whole thing, just the parking lot. Okay. Right. Yeah. <laughs> So yeah, we um, project got the bid. We received uh, three bids back uh, last week. The low bidder was the Hatch Group um, for fifty four thousand one hundred four. That was really really close to actually the estimate that Keith had provided in the budget. Um, so it was nice to see that the mm -hmm. bids were were higher. Um, so okay. check references and. Uh, they like came we up. expect that they came back <laughs> good because if you're putting bad references, you wouldn't be in business anymore. 
Um, well, yeah, mm -hmm. <laughs> um, but we still check them. Yes, we do. Mm -hmm. um, so um, I, I have one question about the hatch roof and yeah. the ditch form. They say their address is 40 Cape Road. Where? I have double checked that it's Milford, <laughs> Milford, Mass. Mm -hmm. um, there are other documents that do. Oh, oh okay. That is, uh, yeah. It seemed um, rather incomplete. Right. So, I mean, uh, again, we're, we're trying to uh, hurry up with this project. Uh, we tentatively have them scheduled to page next Monday. Monday. So, oh. the board is okay with uh, awarding this contract today and we can get the paperwork done. Okay. Um, Keith's been working hard to get you know, everything okay, set everything down there. Ready. So, I very much appreciate that because we're trying to beat the grant deadline. I um, move that we. Think, um, well, the grant deadline's the end of the fiscal year. No, no it's the end of. Well, it's the end of May. May. End of May. Okay. End of May. Oh yeah. Oh, so, so a month, a month sooner. Yeah. And, and really, it's it's we need to have the project closed out and invoiced before that. So, yeah. um, if we can get this company in here on, on Monday and Tuesday and get the job mm -hmm. done, that's super helpful. We might get it approved before seven forty or six forty, maybe. So that would be good. I move that we award the contract for the paving at Hurley Key Park to the Hatch Group. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All right, great. Uh, now, the next item uh, to discuss the fiscal year 24 operating budget and articles for annual town meeting. Um, that's the thick one. Here we go. Ready? Okay. Um, so I can run through. Yeah, this. please. Yeah. Please lead us through. Let me just find my time. There's the one with the sticky notes on it. Okay. <clears throat> and the folder called ATM or mm -hmm. um, so articles one, two, three, and four and five are boilerplate articles that authorize essentially the town to do business so the bank accounts expend. You know, grant money, those types of things. The same that we see every year. Article six, we um, established spending limits for the town's revolving funds. I believe these were these were increased last year. Um, and I haven't heard of any need to to increase these. Okay. Um, so these are pre-existing accounts that we set the spending limit of each year. Um, article seven um, is to fix salaries or compensation of elective officers of the town. Um, so this is the same amount as last year plus the five and a half percent COLA. Um, article eight and article nine are the budget article. So we can come back. We can come back to those. Okay. Uh, because I have the budget in a separate document. So oh, okay. I don't I don't yeah. spend the time putting it in here until it's until it's really set in stone. Right. Um so article 10. Um Finance committee is proposing $225,000 of free cash to reduce the tax levy. And feel free to stop me whenever there's discussion that okay. needs to happen. Article 11 um, is to transfer $20,000 uh, from free cash to the vehicle stabilization fund. Article 12 is $20,000 from free cash to the town building stabilization fund. Um, Article 13 is to set aside $10,000 of free cash. Um, to pay for the town's portion of, of uh, the conservation a, uh, conservation agent um, to assist the conservation conservation commission. So there was a, if you recall that ten thousand dollars was in the operating budget. The time of that's uncertain, so it, the finance committee thought that it would be better to set that aside and not tax ten thousand dollars every year until right. And that ten thousand dollars is an estimate anyway. Yes, yeah. it's not a hard figure, right? And that's a shared conservation agent, right? Um, between towns to be named. And that's something that's being kind of worked on by our conservation commission, right. perhaps some others. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Article 14 is um, $100,000 uh, from free cash to pay for the new uh, heavy duty pickup truck and plow. That's to replace the Ford F 550. Um, mm -hmm. Article 15 is the $55,000 from free cash. And that's for the, the updated police equipment that's being required through uh, the updated uh, posts. It's called post C regulations. Right. It, um, this one, I, I feel like this one was, weren't we going to read those instead? 
So, so yeah, there's an option where it can be paid over. Um, it can be paid over a five-year period. I think it's like this which I'm saying. It could be paid over a five-year period, or you can pay up front. And there's right, and I, and I kept hearing that we were going to pay it over the five-year period and rent. Essentially, it's rent, like renting the equipment or leasing it rather than do it all in one month. So, um, that's that's an option. Um, I I guess the finance committee was thinking that we would just set the money aside up front. Oh, so if even though we're, we might pay for it over five years, we appropriate all of it now. It, it leaves either option open, I believe. And it leaves both options cost open. savings to oh. doing five years. Oh, okay. All right. So that okay. Understood. Now I, I remember now the conversation's a little better. Okay. Yeah. Uh, are we paying for just the purchase the equipment or is it purchase and maintenance and support? Uh, oh, software can, and we can add that language in there. Yeah, that might be good. Yeah. Right. Yeah, I can, I can I'll, I'll add some language in like that. Um, Article 16, um, this is to try to um, use some of our leftover money from when we had um, the ambulance operation. There was money remaining in, in three separate accounts mm -hmm. um, that we're suggesting be appropriated to, to pay for a portion of the, the SCAN's capital assessment for the purchase and equipping of a new ambulance. And the remainder of you know the difference between I think it was forty six thousand dollars, and this the the select board was willing to use uh, CLFRM funds for that. Yeah. Um, so, so that's what these three articles are appropriating the amount in those accounts for is, sixteen, seventeen, and eighteen. Is that ambulance purchase set yet, or is it still pending? I have not. And pending approvals from other from the other towns. I think it would. I, I think we would have to vote to approve it. Um, yeah, no, we would have to, but if we vote to approve it, it still doesn't necessarily mean it's going to happen if the other, if Sunderland and Fairfield don't sign on as well. And so all three articles there are cleaning out little cubby holes of accounts. And then um, the CLFRF money doesn't show up on here because that's not a town meeting vote. Right. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Um, not, Article 19 is a request from uh, Frontier to authorize Frontier to establish um, a capital stabilization fund. Long overdue. So, sorry. Yeah, I was to do it retroactively. <laughs> Long overdue. The money retroactively. Right. Um, Article 20 is um, uh, are the CPA set asides or appropriations um, from FY20 for estimated revenue. Typical. Um, That's almost boilerplate. It is, yeah. yeah. The amounts are There's, a little bit higher. Because um, we got more money? I, I think because yeah. they estimate that there's going to be more money. For um, Article 21 is um, an, appropriate, uh, an appropriation of CPA funds for the, um, it's really the frontier capital assessment to pay for the, the tennis courts. Um, at Frontier. Article 22 um, it is an appropriation of $8,000 of CPA money to repair um, <laughs> the steps at the library, um, steps surrounding masonry columns and replacement of the iron railings. Um, Article 23 is to uh, appropriate $27,350 of CPA funds. Um, for restoration of one of the three masonry silos at Quan Quan Farm. Um, this article um, created a lot of, generated some discussion at the Finance Committee. Um, mm -hmm. yeah, I so that. I highlighted recommended by Select Board because I wasn't sure. The other ones I was kind of guessing that's where the board was going to land, mm -hmm. but I wasn't really sure about this article. Obviously, the, you know, the, I think what some people object to is the fact that it's, it's it's not a public entity that owns um, the asset that's that the, the money's being used to preserve. Um, so, um, yeah, I honestly don't know where I stand on this one. Um, 
Yeah, I, I know Donna spoke um, about this at a previous meeting. And I'm trying to remember exactly, you know, what she said, the historical, um, maybe historical commission was weighing in on it. Does anybody remember what she was saying? I remember I, something about it being one of the, the three are some of the few either in Massachusetts or in New England. Yeah, um, yeah. Um, and this is kind of a rare find. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. So yeah, I should mention, so at the next meeting on, on May 9th is when we need to sign the warrant. So that's sort of when the that's when we have to, we have to yeah. sign so I either strike that or keep that or so um okay. Or, okay. No, right. I'll think yeah. about it or I think yeah, I guess I'd like to think about it more and I may uh, I may try to find some people to chat with and kind of get two sides of it. I, I do remember hearing a lot about it at the uh, the finance committee meetings. So yeah, I listened in on all of those. Okay. Yeah. So the next um, articles are zoning articles. Um, these still need to be reformatted. Um, but Article Twenty Four um, is adding in the language that is underlined here. Uh, Planning board says that that was an omission from a previous amendment. So they're adding that language back in to that section. Article 25 um, <coughs> is amending the zoning bylaw to delete references to the Woodley Water District wells in the interim wellhead protection area. Um, that one place because there were wells there. Now there are no longer wells there. That's there really are no longer. It's not like the well that we're just kind of keeping in reserve right. in case we ever need it. There's My, really, there's no longer wells. No, there. Yeah. Yep. Okay. So they're amending the zoning bylaw accordingly. So that does this then effectively make our aquifer protection district smaller? Um, it's a it's one. Yeah, maybe yeah, one less area. Bit, yeah, one less area. I believe. Um, I mean, you can't make it bigger, right? Right. Um, no addition, addition by subtraction. Right. You can do that with vectors, but you can't do it with water <laughs> protection. Not with zoning. Not with zoning. Yeah. Okay. Um, article 26. I believe these are corrections to the map, corrections to the zoning map. Okay. Um, Why can't we just correct the maps? So we can't just correct the maps because the maps were adopted with the errors. Oh, adopted um, the adoption mistakes. Okay. Yeah. All right. Sorry. Um, I know it's useless to rail that common sense should prevail. We should just be able to. Yeah. Okay. Mistakes All right. Let's not take a lot of time on it. <laughs> so number one here um, is that so so AR one district is defined as four hundred feet into the lot from a from a from a road from a road right from a from a public way. Um, and when the map was when Pine um, Plains Estates was put in, the the map wasn't done correctly because oh, okay. um, the road was put in, so the zoning showed. Sure. We need to vote in. Oh, we need to vote the in. zoning. Yeah. Or it may have even been that the, the road was actually approved, but nothing was constructed. So we didn't never adjust the map. Anyways, the map is wrong. It needs to be corrected. Um, yeah. and that's what ag residential one? Uh, it's the oh, it's ag residential. It's close to the road. Closer to ag residential road. two is like 400 yeah. feet back. Yeah. And so it makes a difference. Like, like we've got a lot of roads, like Westbrook, Chestnut Plain, yeah. all these roads. What's kind of along them is ag residential one, and what you're allowed to do there is different from what you're allowed to do in ag residential two, which is the stuff that's kind of um, landlocked. I'd like to say that that's not going to Okay, so I was just clarifying yeah. the actual distance on ag residential. Four hundred oh. you know, feet. I think. I thought ag residential two was four hundred. Oh, the well, boundary the between them. Feet. So road. What is the feet, difference that we are seeing? 400 feet cha changed from one to the other. Ag residential one, ag residential two. So if there's a road there, there's a boundary 400 feet in. Ag one can go right up to the road. It can go, yeah, right up to the road. Okay, yeah. Yes, 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 yes. Okay. I didn't understand the question. Sorry. It's all right. I might not have phrased it clearly. Yeah. yeah. So that's number one. Um, 
there's a bunch of lots, obviously. So I'm going to find, right. find a more efficient way to list those. Okay. Um, I don't know, a table. Number two is, well, the way it was presented to me was, <laughs> you know, lots, blah, 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 one through 36. I'm going to keep this kind of cutting. Um, yeah. uh, two, there's two lots uh, at the at the end of Grail Lane and mm -hmm. um, the one that goes that way, Francis Way, mm -hmm. um, that are owned by the Commonwealth of Massachusetts that go farther than the 400 feet. So those are split lots. So those are split in the sense of you have a large lot. The split. front half is AR1 split. and then the back is AR2. Those are split. Um, three, there were some split lots that shouldn't have been split lots. Um, so they're correcting those. And um, four is correcting the map where um, there was a parcel on State Road that they showed as commercial, which was adopted, but mm -hmm. it was actually explicitly the, the rezoning of that was from commercial was actually explicitly explicitly rejected. Um, which so it was saying, do you know what lot where that lot is? It is. Um, is that the one that it is immediately to the north of Monahan Shopping? Okay, yeah. Um, I think there's a barn on the property. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Um, okay. So the, well, we have, um, do you think they'll be able to provide a map that actually, I think we got one in our packet, or there was one posted with the hearing. There is a, there is a map. There, there is, is a, map. a map, and that would be available at town meeting because I assume yep. there will be yep. questions. And, yeah. And it can't be a map that's like this big. They've done a lot of work on a new map with. Um, yeah. with the GIS staff at okay. Burkhog. And it's good. much, much, much improved. Oh, okay. Okay, good. good. Um, they spent some time on it. So, good. Um, the right. Article 27 is a, um, Article 27 and 28 kind of go together. Mm -hmm. um, 28 just adds table of use provision for that use. So this is this is actually a, a submission from a property owner. Um, to add a new use called marijuana product manufacturer. Um, so it's an entity meeting the definition of marijuana product manufacturer, but limited to operations that do not require the use of hazardous materials as part of the manufacturing process. Um, and, and that, right, right now, we do have, there's marijuana growth, there's marijuana retail, and there's marijuana processing, I want to say. There was something where you're making products, but that's different from yeah. this. So, and it's different, at least in one way, uh, about the use of hazardous materials is not required. Okay. So, so what they're trying, right, they're trying to different, differentiate between marijuana product manufacturer, where you can use the things like propane, butane, ethanol, or, or those types of things that, that they use, mm -hmm. right, as to extract or, or mm -hmm. you know. That would be the processing. Right. Um, that can be hazardous. <clears throat> um, so they're trying to exclude those processes, but allow the other processes mm -hmm. um, mm. that they list above to take place. Um, this was submitted by um, uh, the owners, uh, one of the owners of uh, of the State Road DM, DMCTC, mm -hmm. because they see they see this as one of the um, one of the additional uses that could take place within their building. Mm -hmm. Obviously, there's a concern about hazardous. As is, the hazardous yeah. nature of that use. So they were trying to pick, take that out and try to you know, explain what they could do. Oh, okay. And, and is this, this category of um, <clears throat> marijuana product manufacturer limited, is that something that's already defined by the state? Or is this a, a definition that we're um, making up locally? I believe marijuana manufacturer is a defined. Mm -hmm. But marijuana manufacturer limited is not is, right. Is is a local, that is a local variation. Local variation. Okay. Definition. And then twenty eight is is in addition to the table of use. So assuming twenty seven passes, then you would want to pass twenty eight. Um, no. So N means no. SP equals means a special permit, which is discretionary approval by the zoning board of appeals. No, no. In in any in both of the ag districts. Especially in a commercial, commercial industrial or industrial. Um, so, um, and we can talk about uh, we should talk about Article Twenty Nine separately. Um, but are there any other questions? Again, this would 
Okay. We'll be looking for signatures at the next meeting on May 9th. Um, and then obviously the budget too. I want to just touch on that. Okay. Okay. So quickly in terms of the budget, then we can get to Article 29. Yeah. Order yeah. Um, I submitted a revised budget. Um, it's draft 10. Um, I'm going to be asking the finance. I'm going to be asking the finance committee to revote um, on this budget. Um, that's the one with that's this. Yeah, one. that's this one. Okay. Um, it's about eleven. So from draft nine, it's about eleven thousand dollars less mm -hmm. than draft nine. Um, and two of these are because two of these reflect new finance committee votes that they took. One was an increase to the treasure collector line item for the additional hours. Um, for Conservation Commission, that's the second highlighted. Um, going down the sheet here, um, ten, we took ten thousand dollars out of the operating budget and moved that to a special to a special article for the shared conservation agent. Mm -hmm. um, South County EMS sent us a revised budget um, a week ago, maybe a week and a half ago. Um, it was uh, just over uh, two thousand dollars less. Um, and then I received actual renewal information for property and liability insurance and mm -hmm. um, workers' right. compensation mm -hmm. insurance. So I'm more comfortable with those amounts. So those are both uh, lowered as well. Okay. So it, it uh, the grant town operating budget, the total would be $6,020,209. Again, that's about um, $11,000 less than what we had for draft nine. Uh, and if I was actually looking at the, um, there's a prop, proposition two and a half sheet that I sort of, I keep telling agents about dating. Um, and I, as you know, I always pay attention to excess levy capacity and which way that goes. I don't think we need to hear that spiel again. Yeah. Um, oh, please, <laughs> I'll play it back. <laughs> um, yeah. But I'm actually, it actually, it was, I mean, it's a year where there were where, where there were some important changes in terms of the fire department, in terms of, you know, changes with the police department, and in terms of, um, I mean, in, in my opinion, in terms of trying to get compensation up where we can be competitive, and I think uh, address, addressing the inflation problem and labor costs. So, but it's only a reduction of about $56,000 in the excess levy capacity. So. Uh, that's that's really not bad. Modest considering what we're coming Yeah, yeah. yeah. It, we're still we're still going to be, and again, this is a projection. We're still going to be at one point one million in excess levy capacity, which is which is, you know, which is sufficient, more than sufficient. Um, but it's a it's a it's a smaller reduction. Um, I wanted to be some. I suggested that we'd be somewhere around five percent in terms of the increase in the tax levy, and four or five percent in it. It's pretty close to five percent. So, um, I think it. Would, I think we ended in a good spot. So, um, yeah, I think that's a win, all things considered. You know, it's been it's great, crazy times. Yeah. Um, so I'm looking at the very last sheet on the, oh no, I don't have it, but I just realized the answer to questions. No question. What's that? I, I thought I had a question. I realized oh. what the answer was. <laughs> okay. And then. So, this takes care of Articles 8 and then that we said skipped over. Yeah, and yeah. the enterprise funded budget is and it's right there as well. Um, yeah. and, and there are there are discussions to adjust water rates, um, which hopefully yeah, yeah. So hopefully we can have I know it means you have to pay more, but you get the same amount of water. So called <laughs> inflation. Going back to the budget, the bottom line on the uh, rate increases. 2.6 percent for the uh the tax the increase yeah. in the tax levy yeah yeah i believe that's right yeah, that's the increase on the tax bill is that the same as uh that's about what did i do with my sheet bottom right this one yeah is that the yeah that that assumes the average single income value of the house Stays constant. Okay. Yep. 
So that leads to the next, um, the next item on the agenda was the voter petition, which is Article 29 on the England How We Can Warrant. Mm -hmm. So um, the law says that um, when the select board receives a voter petition of 20 or more registered voters that's certified by the Board of Registrars as, as real residents in town, then the article goes on the warrant. Um, yep. So Article 29 would be that. Um, mm -hmm. It goes on verbatim. So I put that on there. Um, but obviously, um, the board can take a position one way or the other as to what it thinks about um, or take no position or you could take one position one or the other. But it's mm -hmm. it's a it's a petition, a voter petition um, that was submitted. Um, it says uh, personnel bylaw, there shall be a three member personnel committee pursuant to authority contained in Mass General Law Chapter 41, Section 108. Uh, the purpose of the personnel committee bylaws to establish a permanent personnel committee to serve in advisory capacity to the select board and other appropriate town committees and personnel. It says the committee shall be composed of the following persons. One resident appointed by the moderator, one resident appointed by the select board, and this is in verbatim, one resident uh, served or appointed by the finance committee. Majority of voting members shall cross to a quorum. Members shall serve without compensation and serve until their successors are elected. And all voting members appointed must not be a current employee, elected official, or direct relative of the aforementioned mentioned personnel for a period of three years prior to serving on the personnel committee. End of yeah. end of by proposed good. bylaw, I guess. So that is what's been submitted to the town. Is this the appropriate chapter and section? I remember that I don't when, believe so. When we initially got this, there was some concern about I, be, I believe the section that that we're trying to cite here is 108 A, A or 108 B. <clears throat> um, I believe it's 108 A. Um, Mm -hmm. Okay. So, uh, so I'm not positive. Um, obviously, the warrant's going to go to town council to review. Right. Uh, and, but but we, it hasn't gone yet, or right, it has not gone. Yet. And I, I have a couple of questions for town council on it. One: Does this supersede the existing personnel committee, or does it set up a second personnel committee? I would have that same question. Yeah. I would also ask the town council: Is it legal? to prohibit someone from serving if a direct relative has an interest, but that person, guess, but the person in question does not. When, um, are you allowed to penalize someone for being related to someone? Right, and I guess uh, maybe direct relation does have a legal definition and I don't necessarily know what it is. <laughs> I don't know if this is an appropriate question or not, but I'm, I'd be curious to know from the folks who submo submitted the petition, what is the aim? Mm -hmm. well, why is this being proposed yeah. in addition to the current personnel committee? What is, what is the hope for outcome? I don't know if we can get an answer on that. I, I, don't, I, I don't think so because it's submitted by 20, you know, 20 folks. I think that's a good question. Yeah. Yeah. Town meeting floor, probably. Um, okay. Oh. I'm also understanding that this committee, as it well, as well as the existing personnel committee, have no actual power of their own other than recommendations. They can't approve. Disapprove spending or anything. Yeah. They all, all they can do is suggest. Yeah. yeah. Right. Which is what the existing personnel committee right. does. Which is what the well. existing personnel committee does. Yeah. That's right. why it have, it, yeah. So so the current well, person the, the, the existing personnel committee is created through through the personnel policy, which is the policy of the select board, um, which is currently being revised and being gone through mm -hmm. with a consultant. Um, mm -hmm. So it seems like that would be a better avenue yeah. to 
pursue whatever the aim is here. To, but they've pursued it, but whoever yeah. has, but has pursued it through this mechanism. Yeah. Is it appropriate at all prior to town meeting to ask the folks who submitted the petition what that hoped for aim is? Like, could I, as a select board member, call them up and say, I'd like to understand more about what you're hoping to get from this? Um, so the, the, the petition that is certified is public information. Okay. So and it's certified at this point. It has been certified. Um, so there are folks who yeah, I mean, there, who signed that. Yeah, to, there's any number of people. So you're welcome. I did speak to one of them today, but uh, yeah, I'd probably be not representative. Just, yeah, I'd be curious yeah. to hear the thinking behind it to understand it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, they, they're certainly allowed. Is it? I see I mean, several I, finance committee. I know the finance committee has had issues with the personnel committee over the years. And I don't get it. They, they don't get it because they don't have to listen to the personnel committee, and most of the time they don't. Right. So I don't understand why there's. Do they feel threatened by the personnel committee? Do I don't know. I don't. Know. If I ask somebody and I find out, I'll uh, you know. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, in the meantime, I, I, I personally would not, I mean, as a member of this board, would not either recommend or not yeah, recommend yeah, sending further information. Yeah, I would need more as information, I like, um, information as well. Well, I don't know that we can count on getting more information. You know, we've got a, a list right. of signers, but we don't know what, you know. Right, who, right. Who it sounds like. I think Julie's got a lot of time in her hands. She's going okay, to take a lot of walks with people. The she, she's she's going to be out with the trees a lot. To be out with the trees, and she's yeah. going to be I'm gonna, maybe well, uh, in a, touch with some of these. At least people. one or two of my neighbors. Are um, there, yeah, I think you probably know a few. I know. I think so we, all, we all know a few. Have a right. chat and find out, you know, what they're thinking. Yeah, is. yeah. And, and, I, and, I, and I spoke with at least one who. I, I won't, I probably should uh, okay, should, should characterize. I probably should characterize somebody else's comments um, in, in this form. Yeah, I, I, this, I, I just know that there's been some dissatisfaction yeah. expressed in the Finance Committee over the years. Yes, and, and, and I hear that too, but I, I, I like the way Julie put the question, what is the outcome you're hoping for? Because it it's unclear from the petition. It's, yeah, it isn't. It isn't clear to me why removing anyone who has anything to do with the operation of our town from the personnel committee will do to make their advice better. Or why making a second personnel? Or why committee making a certain would be anything but right. right. From, from, from the wording of this, I can't see anything but yeah. this sets up a second personnel committee. Yeah. Yeah, so next because there's nothing seven. about abolishing the existing. Yeah, so right. So there's too many. Yeah, there's a lot of questions. And not sure. They, uh, right. Okay. okay. So here we're going to look for a little more information. And we'll, do you think we'll hear back from town council by our next meeting? That's a week from now. Um, I can I can ask. Okay. And uh, so I may. <laughs> Okay. Those are two different answers. Uh, I will. I will. Now I will yes. get an answer back. I, I don't know. Next week. Let's forget this was among the question. The question is: Does the improper section invalidate the, right. the it, petition it, entirely? Because yeah. if, if well, there's it, nothing about setting up personnel committees under Section 108, but it then, sounded like it was a 108A and a 108B. So 108 these, these things have, these it, have to I be mean, precise. I do, but, but if 108 encompasses both, I, you know, it might be. Well, that's, that's what council, council should right. be telling us. I, I don't believe it, it's not 108 subsection A, it's section 108A is different than section 108. There's like a 108A, 108B, 108. And then Q, does, does that uh, invalidate the whole thing because? Right. There's no provision to set up such a committee under section 108. Right. Okay, all right. More shall be revealed. Good. I like getting more information. Thank you, Julie, for stepping up on that and literally stepping out into the trees. There. Yeah. Okay, all right.
Hey, we are we might be done before special town meeting. Uh, maybe oh, no. we, we have town administrator updates. And, oh uh, my goodness. He could be long with yeah, okay. I think all right. Really so we've discussed new business A. All right, we got come on 15 minutes. Got me. Uh, to discuss whether to pursue change in the zip code of all addresses in Waitley to 01093. Um, and uh, that, uh, I don't know who should address I feel like Lynn Sibley should address that, but I think she's got her hands full carding people on the way in. She created oh. this mess before she left. So, oh, okay. All right. Thank you, Lynn. So, well, one of the challenges that we have is we have multiple zip codes. Yeah. Only two. No, well, there's three, three, four. four. Uh, there's at least three uh, for, for oh. delivery addresses, and then there's a PO box. Yep. Yeah, there's been that field that's too. Right, they don't do the truck delivery. There's so, in, in so. Yeah. Sorry. So, when had contact in the governor's office, uh, Congressman the governor's office, and they arranged a, a meeting with the United States Post Office, and we informed them that the challenges that it creates in terms of in terms of you know, mailing addresses, in terms of real ID, you know, mm -hmm. there was a lot, there was a, there were a lot of problems with real IDs. Um, hey, Lynn's here. Um, <laughs> so Thank you, Lynn. <laughs> all the problems with the multiple zip codes in oh. Oh, these segments. Oh, yeah. Oh, like, 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 you don't, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, okay, 45 seconds. 45 seconds, okay. Deliveries from... UPS, FedEx, all of those get go go to your field. Um, the mail, the people trying to get their real ID and not having anything that has their Waitley address on it. They may have their street, but it says South Fairfield. So when they go to try to get their real ID, they can't. Um, it's creating problems. I've had we've had residents that have their power shut off because their electric bills were going to Deerfield's resident, who said, "Does it live here?" Returned it. Oh, um, let's see. I'm trying to think. Excellent. Excellent. So like yeah. Um, they go to Deerfield uh, yeah. because when they go to the Registry of Motor Vehicles, there's three places. Uh, it's the the physical address, the mailing address, and the garaging location. So if those three aren't put in correctly, they will go to a different town. That means Deer, um, uh, Deerfield yeah. gets our money. No, Deerfield, re Deerfield <laughs> rejects them and we have to rebuild them. Okay. So. All right. No, <laughs> I think that, that's, that's the way to get people on board, Then is to tell them Deerfield's going to get our money otherwise. Yeah. yeah. What about voter registration? Voter so registration. Yeah, yeah, when you look up um, people, they go to... Um, they go to, go to the registry. If it gets put in in South Deerfield, they automatically get registered in Deerfield. Deerfield rejects them, lets us know here in Waitley that they've rejected them, and we send another letter to them saying, yeah. it appears that you tried to register using a Deerfield address, and here is a new registration form, and return it. Uh, so that's an issue. And then when people go to look up to see if they're registered to vote, they use their zip code of 01373 and they aren't going to show up because, yeah. you know, and you have to, that's what kind of leads you to whether you're a registered voter on the mm -hmm. mass yeah. uh, website. Oh gosh, that's it. the okay. census forms, the, mm -hmm. it's just. Oh, and we're uh, not the only small town that has this. No. I, I, I know Buckland and Shelburne have uh, similar problems. Mm -hmm. Um Buckland, um, Shelburne, and Ashfield, and right. Conway, and I think that's yeah. And I don't do to less with a less important problem to things like the senior center usage is based. They yeah. don't you know figure out. We want to know by town who's oh. using it and the federal the zip code. Yeah. Yeah. You know when they went to um, send out the. Uh, the federal census to everybody, they use the Waitley address, they get returned. Mm -hmm. So then they would have to come and go door to door to people. Uh, yeah. So it sounds just, like a really good thing for an article in the school. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm hoping that the survey that's out there um, will help. Mm -hmm. I just, I, I I'm took not the sure survey. There was enough, I did take it. Yeah, I did too. I'm just not sure there it, it might not have been a big enough explanation on what 
what mm -hmm. we were looking for. But yeah. um, I have a feeling that people will understand. I get people, we have people oh, yeah. who are- Who hasn't had a run-in with the post office on the <laughs> zip code, right. which the answer from the post office is, because it's easier that way. And I'm <laughs> easier for him. Well, the interesting right. thing is we've kind of resolved the problem in West Whaley because the Hagenville Post Office, who delivers mail to West Whaley, allowed people to use West Whaley 01039. Mm -hmm. And that seems to have helped out with a lot of the delivery and stuff like that. So I'm a little concerned that those West Whaley people won't want to mess with anything mm -hmm. of changing these oh, zip codes. We have a liaison right? to West Whaley right <laughs> here. Question yeah. is, is we're saying it'll make it easier, but is there any place where it'll, what mm -hmm. are the repercussions down the road, or well, are the there any that will make it easier? everybody if it, it's going to be a challenge to begin with because yeah. everyone's going to have to change their address they're going to have to change it with everybody that they have mm -hmm. and go back to the weight league mass 1093 so it's going to take some work on on people's parts to do it mm -hmm. but i think in the long run people will mm -hmm. will be we'll recognized as a town again and in terms <laughs> of delivery will it foul anybody up I post office or so. fedex or um, anything like that They've agreed, the post office agreed to format for up to a year. Okay. Okay. And I think that most of the drivers, maybe not so much at the holiday time mm -hmm. when they hire a lot of temps, yeah. but most of the drivers in the area for UPS and FedEx and Amazon and all the other delivery services out there have learned yeah. that, okay. Uh -huh. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and, and if some so. of the junk mail doesn't get forwarded, oh, well. <laughs> hey, well, yeah. uh, so that was the, 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 the trigger this year was the excise tax bills when I got like a hundred excise tax bills that were garaged in Waitley. Uh, no, yeah, garaged in Waitley, but they were South Deerfield people. Mm. Oh, okay. so, so you had to rebuild everything. Yeah, so I we had to um, void them out in the the system and then have them rebuilt in Deerfield. Oh, oh, so that's the other way around. Yeah, it goes both ways. It does go both ways. It does go oh, both okay. ways. So maybe in the end we add. Wait, when you say garage and Waitley, though, that's interesting. It, it was garage. It had a lot of. It almost is like Waitley was a default address for some. Oh, for some. Uh, because we have also have it's maybe these are people who want a little bit or Mendes. Uh -huh. Um, we also get a whole bunch of theirs, and yeah. their zip code is nowhere near ours. So yeah. uh, from the R and B. Okay. So. Yeah, so okay. that's the gist of the story. And that okay. what... seems reasonable to me to well, try it. And every other time we've approached them on this, they said there's nothing they can do. So now it looks like there is something they can do. You say that and... the post also. Yeah. yeah. They were like, oh, yeah, this is easy. We can just oh, set yeah. it up in the computer and like, just we'll do it. Ready to fly. All right. right. Well, <laughs> is, I mean, uh, is this something where we we need a vote? It sounds like this is more or less. We just wanted to decided and we just wanted to bring it to I don't think it's decided yet. Oh. Uh I, I think that the, the post office needs to hear from us that oh, okay. this this is what we're gonna do. Mm -hmm. Um so there's a survey out to, to try to get people's opinions. Uh, but it, again, it's gonna it's gonna create an initial burden on mm -hmm. people to change yeah. their, you know, change with any mail that they get, they need to change their address. Utility bills, credit card bills, mortgage bills, but you know, anything mm -hmm. like that. It, there's there's that. Yeah. Okay. It's like when you move, you have to change your address. Right. right. Yeah. I don't know. But in the it, long run, I think there most people will be much happier because yeah. then they can yeah. actually say, I live in Waitley. Yeah. yeah. We aren't the town, um, we are Waitley, South Deerfield, Mass. That's know? right. <laughs> and, and a little thing like a GPS. I'm sure you've had people come visit oh, and oh, end yeah. up in Deerfield yeah, because no, North, there's a North Street in Deerfield. Deerfield. Yeah. Road. I've had packages to deliver to almost every road that has a 152. Yeah. In, uh, in Deerfield and in Waitley, yeah. Yeah, it's, yeah, the biggest problem is when the address exists both in Waitley and in Deerfield. Yeah. North Street is kind of lucky because it's only a very short street in, in mm -hmm. Deerfield. But I, River I, I Road there, will end so. up there, though. Yeah. yeah, but River Road is one of those that has many addresses that are the same. Yeah. So, 
Did you want to add something? Yes, as somebody who's been affected by this, on the one hand, I, there's a part of me that would love to see this normalization take place. But it just occurred to me listening to the discussion about the, the burden. I have relatives who are not really on the internet much. And it's easy to do a lot of these name uh, address changes. You can get on a computer. But the, there could be disproportionate hardship on an older population. Yeah. To accept. There are a lot of addresses that people yeah. might have to change. And so I just right. want us to just sort of. But I think, it, yeah, we, we've got to, I mean, what we have at our disposal, we can get news out to people who live here pretty readily through the computer. Um, what kind of support people might need um, is another question. You, you, everything that comes in the mail, do you ever want to see it again? Yeah, write them and tell them. Right. You've got a new address. I bet that's yeah, something that where we could get the, the library. Yeah. We could. We should line up support, though. That's yeah. a really good point yeah. for uh, for some people. It will be easier than for others to implement a change of address. Is there a hand in the back there? Yeah, I mean, one of the other issues that in with this is that we, I was living in West Waitley. I was asked to do jury duty because of my O one O three nine, which is about Hampshire County. Oh. Uh, oh, so I had to do jury duty in both counties. Oh, right. Because they knew I physically lived and paid taxes in Waitley, but <coughs> my mail was coming to um, oh, okay. county. And so I was like, you guys pick because I'm not doing that. Well. <laughs> 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 Thank you for your yeah. 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 Like, just, Services. Like, one thing on one the list. Yeah. Okay. So maybe the fact that people won't be so. Upset about switching it over to all yeah. Well, I think a, a nice article kind of um, delineating kind of all the problems it causes yeah. um, mm -hmm. and acknowledging this is going to take a little effort on people's part, but here's why it's worth it. Yeah, and I, I think that most people will be. In I think favor most people will have their own story and they'll write in. Right. Like, exactly. Hey, you didn't include this thing in your list. Yeah. 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 We'll have to put a new page on the Waitley website for stories about the students. Stories <laughs> about the students. Right. Yeah, now you're going to have some probably businesses complain to the change letterhead business cards. Yeah, those are the yeah. ones that it could be probably a little rough. But. So, how, how the survey is up to length? Does it have a high pay fund? Um, no. Okay. When do we? When will next, like? Yeah, next scoop comes out in like three weeks or so. Okay. So we can get something in, and, and it sounds like Lynn's in a really good position to write that. It's going to cut to your hours. It's going to cut to your yeah. Into your, your retirement hours. No, I'm retired. I'm not going to get payroll done. <laughs> Sorry, I can't get paid right now. Our hope is good. All right. Yeah, so. I mean, okay. is a general sense that would I, a general my sense general sense or, is we understand what it's yes. enough benefit, way and way enough benefit. Um, and I, I would encourage if any business feels that there's going to be an unfunded hardship that they should speak up so we can hear about it. Mm -hmm. But otherwise, it does seem so. As of today, the respondents to the survey 70% were in favor and 12, 15% said they didn't care either way. And then the rest. Mm. Okay. All right. Should we bookmark yeah. it? Let's bookmark it here at um, local. We'll reconvene with 7C. We're going to recess our meeting for a short, uh, very short break to have special, special town meeting. Special town meeting will start at 7 30. So now's the time to refill your water bottle or take care of anything else you might need to take care of. And it looks like we will not be long after. Okay. I'm going to stop the recording. I still have one. Can I get two notes? Uh, all right. So back to business here on the select board agenda. Um, we're at uh, 7C. We want to discuss whether the select board wants to participate in the town of Deerfield's 350th anniversary parade. And what is the date of that parade? I don't see it on. June. June something. June something. Um, something. Yeah. It was, uh, it, uh, it started with a one, I think it was the 17th. I feel like it was the 17th. 
I think it's the eight. The eight is the Sunday. Hey, that cake looks familiar. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Oh, wait. It looked very good. Not here anymore. <laughs> June 17th, 7th. Yeah. 2 p.m. to 4.30 p.m. Yeah. Is out of the country. I'm, I will not be in town. Yeah. So it, when we can it participate. It would be neighborly to participate. I would, if I were here, I would definitely participate. Can yeah. participate between up until 3.30. We have a commitment that evening mm -hmm. that I need to eat dinner beforehand that mm -hmm. we were well rested. Have, have you restarted? Yeah, we restarted. Yeah. But it would be nice to participate. Yeah, I, I think we should. Yeah. I don't feel a need to have a big yeah. or okay. I'm happy to yeah. do something in a car or a pickup truck or even walk. Yeah. Pushing my Jeep to the top of. Oh, cool. Cheap with the top off and some flags, maybe? Yeah, yeah, that's, that's great. Good. That's good. Can we make sure that I have a oh. day this June 17th. Make sure no one else is renting your Jeep. I'm not going to be here. You're not going to be here. <laughs> I'm sorry. And is your Jeep going to be gone, too? Or just you? Jeep. Jeep will be here. <laughs> my son can drive. I mean, I said my son, but he's an adult. It's an adult. So we'll respond yes, and then we think that's we'll, we'll sort out the details. Yes, plus okay. one. Sorry, thank yeah. you. Okay, and we have to walk the walk. Exactly. Yeah. You don't mind doing that. Yeah. And we play, and as long as it's not raining. Yeah. We'll play that great. Yeah. Uh, we walked the Sunderland parade. Yeah. Um, it's like Hatfield's parade a couple years ago. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that one we did not do. Well, no, uh, that was, we didn't like, do anything. Memorial Day. We it, it was, was like 40, degree, 40 degrees in form. It oh, was awesome. uh, yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, next item to discuss the request from the Board of Assessors for a waiver from the Select Board policy requiring meetings to have remote participation options. And I, it's in our packet. I read that over. I might let other people comment first. I feel like there was something in one of these piles of papers that might be relevant here. So I did provide there we go. This is the this is the guidance. Third guidance that it's not draft. Yeah. Um, so it's draft. I, this, I, I mean, should, should this likely be updated to reflect current, you know, COVID conditions? Probably, but I'm not sure that the mm -hmm. That the requirements would actually change, right? I mean, the rationale for, for for the hybrid component of the meeting, the remote component of the meeting, was originally for health and safety reasons, mm -hmm. right? Um, the in past discussions with the board have felt that it was nice to provide people the opportunity to participate and not risk their health depending on their particular health conditions or, or, or risk factors. Um, the, maybe it was a, a, the second reason for, for, or what it did was, in my opinion, it, it created a, a lot more transparency in, mm -hmm. in the operations of the town government. Um, not only were, not only, you know, are, are we broadcasting, you know, similar levels of meetings live, but we're also recording um, mm -hmm. almost every meeting. I'd say almost every meeting because or nearly every meeting, I would think. Um, I don't necessarily keep track of it. Mistakes sometimes happen. People right. Do. Yeah, I've been guilty of that. Slip up. Um, but it creates it creates transparency, and there's a, tr a tremendous amount of meetings, you know, on, on FCAT that can be viewed. Yeah. Um, so so there was a there was a benefit to that because it just created a lot more access to to the decisions that were being made. Yeah. So as you know, as the maybe the 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 public health and safety aspect of it sort of wanes a little bit. I'm not. I, I don't know. Um, but it, it was yeah. nice to have that increased transparency. So um, 
I, I, I could, those are exactly the reasons why I want to keep it, um, especially the recording part. Um, we've got people who sometimes watch the, the meetings later. I'm assuming on double speed, right? But they, they and, and people, I mean, sometimes we just don't think of everything and somebody comes up with a good idea and they send it in. Um, and I think having them recorded and, and having a wider audience is all to the better. Um, and I, I, don't, I don't think it serves us well to say, well, that committee doesn't have to do it. We already have that in the state. The state legislature doesn't have to do this. They don't even have to have open meetings. Mm. So they're, uh, I, I, I would be against, uh, then there's, I think there's also some factual errors in the, the letter they wrote. Now, uh, I really thought I had that page out here. Here. <laughs> I, I got it. There you go. Um, uh, I think the thing, they list four things that they say are um, none of the above activities open to the public um, and appropriate for a Zoom meeting. I don't think that's true of all four of those. Um, I think for number one, we've already said, no, you don't have to have Zoom meetings to your, if we're not, we're not doing private homes of Waitley on TV where, you know, that's home visits are already exempt from the, the Zoom. So that, that doesn't matter. Um, but there are some things in here that might be things that you have to do in executive session, but not all of them. And um, they, you know, they, I don't know what I should say on camera here regarding the adherence to public meeting law, but I think it might be good to remind this group that they are subject to the public meeting law and maybe have a plan to comply with it more thoroughly. And then, you know, get them. I think they need a better idea of what is actually uh, required of them in terms of public meetings. They don't think they have to have public meetings. They haven't had a posted meeting in a bazillion years. Um, but somehow they're doing their business. and. Yeah, it's gotten a little bit better. Yeah. I, 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 I would like also to see them post minutes, take yeah. and post minutes from meetings, which I don't think has yeah. been done in a number of years. Yeah. So I, I don't I would not even consider this until until they do something about public their commitment to transparency. Make a little commitment to transparency in public meetings. You know, that's and it's they, they need to be better, more familiar with what they're allowed to do uh, in, in public and what they're not allowed to do in public. And just whatever you're allowed to do in public, do it in public. And whatever you're not allowed to do in public, do it in the executive session, but do it within the public meeting law because, that makes well, sense. because it's the law and we got to comply with that. Yeah, I've been a little bit curious about this is not public information. None of these activities is open to the public. But that's I'm, not the case. But I'm, uh, uh, my, my question yes. is, is that legally? They're not legally open to the public or you just haven't opened them to the public? So, so, there are, so, are, so there are certain things like the, the, the review and discussion of abatement or exemption applications. Like, that's an that's an exception to the open meeting law where that can be done in executive session because okay. state law allows because that's confidential information. Got it. Okay. Yeah, that's what I was wondering. Which things are the confidential? Applicant. So yeah. So the law makes the law recognizes that and provides you know, provides an exception for that. Yeah. So that could be done in executive session. Um, I, I, in executive sessions, so when we have an executive session, sure, the camera goes off, Zoom goes off. Everybody leaves. Mm -hmm. um, the The law provides for that. Mm -hmm. um, so, and are they bound by public meeting law? Yep. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So then I, I would agree is, that I is a general that. discussion of a specific properties well. assessment supposed to be an open or closed session? That's I, I honestly I don't know the answer to that. Um, 
I don't know of an exemption for that, but I'm not confident in saying that there that there isn't one. The, the assumption in what they've written here is that that is yes, I I, I agree with you. that's what the implication that's what the but the, they think, but the, the yeah. question I, I is, is that the law? Right. Right. Um, so I'm not I'm not sure. Yeah. Um, yeah, legally, I'd like to see what what in terms of legality and confidentiality and sensitive information should not be shared in a public meeting, and then I'd like to see everything else. Yeah, I, I mean, in a public meeting, and and, and I agree with you about so what minutes. what their request is. If if I if I'm hearing the request right, what they're asking for is we're gonna. I mean, the way, that I, the way that I thought it was, was during our meetings, during our public meetings, public portions of our meetings, we don't want to do hybrid. I mean, that's what the request yeah. is, right? It's during our meetings. Oh, um, okay. That's, uh, Cynthia yeah. Allen? Yeah. Yeah, that's not there. Yourself. Um, during the meetings, um, when they have their meetings, you know, during the open portion of their meetings, they don't want to have to do Zoom essentially is what it is. Oh, so they want people to show up if they want to. They, they want to have watch. solely in-person meetings. Okay. Um there there's you know there's there's the second issue that that they were talking about too but um the request is during their open meeting open portion mm -hmm. of their meetings they're asking to not have to do so. Right. Um, and I'm not inclined to grant that myself. So if they if, neither am I part specifically yeah. because of disability. Like if yeah. somebody can't leave the house, but they still are curious and want to either need to it. either want to Maybe. appear that way or want to we 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 should be facilitating. And that is still like in, in F10 Council, what are the what are they obliged to discuss in public and what can be discussed? Yeah, that, we should get that Just also to ensure that the discussions of assessments are not being done on the site visits, which are supposed to be just site visits. But it, it's true, site visits are not supposed to have- Are not supposed to have very great Right. And I have a suspicion that some of the deliberations are being done on the way out of site visits. Just, I'm not, I don't no, know. No, 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 no. suspicion. Right. Right. Okay. Well, it sounds like we're not inclined to grant that waiver. Would you like to take a vote on that? Oh, okay. That way I can tell them. All right. Well, um, can vote to take no action. I move that we take no action mm -hmm. on the uh, request by the Board of Assessors for a waiver from the policy requiring uh, meetings to have a vote. Second. Second. Yeah. All uh, those in favor? Aye. 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 Can I jump in for just a moment? Sure. Um, I put on the town clerk's page this beautiful thing about open meeting laws, how agendas are supposed to be submitted and minutes and everything else. And I actually sent that out to board and committees this afternoon. Mm -hmm. I'm like, hey, here's a reminder and refresher of what's required and what's not required. Oh. According to state law and regulations and open meeting laws and mm -hmm. town requirements and all that stuff. How time will you rock? <laughs> it's on the town clerk's page so on okay. the left hand side. Yeah. Uh -huh. But I put the link to it in the email that I sent out. Okay. Recently. Excellent. And was there a question in the chat? But that might I think that, that chat's been in for a while. Door. Okay, great. Chris just about said it was uh, about the zip codes. It was skewing state data as far as like know. COVID and COVID vaccine. I know, I know. They, they, the vaccination rates in Buckland were abysmal yeah. because they all got their vaccines at children. Yeah. <laughs> they have the, same, the way, the way, yeah. the, the, way yeah. the vaccine rates were really low. Yeah. yeah. And you know, it was the. There's all those people who was out here. Uh, Wall Street Journal or something. There was an article somewhere that most wealthiest. Town in right. Massachusetts or highest property values, right. I think it was Waitley as a mm, they went by zip code. They went by zip, they went by zip, by zip code. <laughs> yeah. 
Okay. All right. Let's go because we're going to get done by eight, I think. All right. Um, to receive the resignation of Don Bates from the position of full time police officer. Uh, I have learned from the last three that this is a, that I can't, we can't reject this and have him say. Right. So, Don will become the yeah. chief of police in Conway. Congratulations, Congratulations to Don. Congratulations to Maybe we can send him a letter to thank him for his service to the town and wish him well in his new position. And he's still and after to... his continuing service as a part time. Right. And his continuing. Yeah. So, you know, we all heard there's going to be no part time officers left. Well, well, there's okay. not, well, we have one, so not zero. <laughs> I don't think it's going to zero. Okay. All right. Select board liaison updates. Um, there's going to be a board of oversight meeting. Well, actually, tomorrow at the um, Deerfield Select Board meeting, we got a little half hour there to talk about something related to this um, building. Uh, it's the grant again, um, the uh, feasibility study, which I hope it's an update on that feasibility study and who's going to do it and so on. But I might be really optimistic. Um, so. <laughs> but it's related to that. That's just a, a like appearing at, and I don't think the whole select board has to be there, but you'd be welcome. I think it's posted properly if you wanted to come and, and listen in on that. Um, uh, and then we're going to have our regular quarterly boo meeting the week after. So the, our next meeting, uh, oh, our next meeting is the day before. So our next, next meeting, I can report back <laughs> on what happens, but uh, we, the town, the newsletter for the uh, South County Senior Center came out. It's awesome. I should forward it all to you. They're doing so much there, and you should be really proud of your senior center. Yay. Okay. Um, um, well, Julian. We met last week, I think it was, with the folks from the Exit 35 study group. Uh, Brian was there, and the folks from the Berkshire Design Group, and Donna Wiley. No, no, no. Judy. Judy Markland and shoot, Brenda, Brenda from the Finance Committee. Um, they gave us a lot of information about zoning and different areas, and we picked out a couple of areas that might be good for development. Uh, I think that's about it. I just would encourage folks to consider uh, unique ideas for development. And I was inspired today when I was over in North Amherst. Um, Speaking with Cinda Jones and looking at the Mill District, what they've got going on over there. She's got a coffee, a high end coffee shop, it's not Starbucks, um, a high end bakery, a couple of restaurants, some craft stores, and a gallery. You could see doing some work on exit 35 that would really make it work for people's time to get off and spend a little time and spend a little money. In Where's your mind? That would be awesome. I've got nothing. Nothing. Nothing good. No. Nope. Right. Um, town office solar project. Um, we received one proposal from Alliance Clean Energy um, for a solar. Um, we will have uh, a meeting with the review committee, which is uh, Joyce, Paul Newland, and myself, to review the one proposal because it's a because it was a request for proposals. We need to. There's a price, there's a price proposal and a non-price proposal. We have to score the non-price proposal first, then we can open the price proposal. Um, so we can do that on Friday. Um, I think we still need to do it, even though we only have one. Um, okay. And then we'll, you know, we'll set up a meeting with with a solar. And one of the reasons we did it, we want the proposal route is because it gives us flexibility in terms of the actual solar array that can go on the roof. Now we have some flexibility to to work with the. Uh, you know the proposer as to the exact system, um, as opposed to if we did information uh, invitation for bids, we specify this is the exact system we want. And they just give us a price. So right. um, I'm glad we went this route. I think it will be very beneficial in the end. Okay. Um, I did talk to town council follow up from our last meeting um, concerns about a, a nuisance dock, um, and I, I reached out to. Uh, the folks who were here and informed them that the, in order to kick off the formal process, the, the board needs to receive a written complaint um, that sets forth, you know, the incident. And once that's happened, um, we have a template that I received to send out notice. And um, I have not received anything yet. So 
um, when that, that happens. Could be something, huh? Yeah, for when that happens, then we can use it, take that process forward. Um, municipal aggregation contracts, those were signed. Question. Um, yeah. I have a question. Oh. Do you need a written complaint from everyone about the dog? Well, it would just be a a a, a single written complaint from anyone. would start the process. Yeah, you can start with one. Uh, but it, it the complaint needs to allege needs to have specific facts mm -hmm. that support the complaint. It can't just it, it shouldn't simply be it can't be general. The dog, dog is a nuisance. Yeah. Um, I I think. Um, as specific as you can be. As specific as you can be. Yeah. Okay. We don't, well, I don't remember them off the top of my head, but I think if they put it in writing, we could uh, certainly, I don't have dates. Dates? No. No, if you have dates. If you have yeah. dates and facts, like the dog bit me on this date and came right. into my yard or whatever, and whatever the clear facts that it came to onto your property, not that you were, yeah. That it came onto your property uh, and then was dangerous. Sounds yeah. Awesome. So, um, uh, municipal aggregation contracts were signed. Yeah, they, um, they have yeah. assets that we don't necessarily overtly talk about pricing, the pricing that was that was received. Um, not, they just asked that they could be a, a formal announcement process. Oh, they, um, but they, the, yeah. the, the, um, a public announcement. It's public, but it's mm -hmm. the rates were similar to what we saw from the indicative pricing, mm -hmm. um, yeah. and there will be an announcement coming from that um, from Colonial. Yeah, on that. Yeah, but we let them do the announcement because they're the professionals. Yeah, um, and then um, housing production plan. Um, there is a draft of the housing production plan that's that's been uh, completed, and I believe there was a meeting of the housing committee. Last Monday, Monday um, to look at that. So hopefully that will be wrapping up soon. Okay. Um, Joyce talked about the South County Senior Center meeting tomorrow. Uh, tomorrow, um, I, I did post it just in case. I'm not uh, rather Julie wanted to attend. I'm not. It was sort of last minute. Yeah. Stuff. I'm not really sure what yeah. exactly is going to be covered. Um, it, to me, it didn't sound like much has happened since. Um, I know since time. the first two times we asked them to go yeah. forward with the feasibility study, um, I'm, I'm hoping that they, they have at least some plan for how they're going to go ahead on that feasibility study. And uh, I, I don't understand why it's taking time. Yeah. So that's why I hope to find out tomorrow. Why is it taking so much time? I have two extra pieces of paper here. Oh. Regarding Quan Quan Farm and a riverfront area, and as well as uh, oh. from Keith Morris, environmental consultant. Oh. Are these relevant to today's meeting? The one from Keith yeah. Morris is usually Specific that's the, applications of herbicide. That's the template. So anytime the railway, the railroad is going to do spraying, mm -hmm. they have to submit a notice to the town. Control nuisance vegetation yeah. in the balanced portion of the railroad right away. Yep. Yeah. So that's what the, the, the Pan Am one is, right? Okay, yep. Yeah. Um so we get that every year. It's, it should have been all the way in the back oh. under town administrative updates and correspondence. Should be the last two sheets in the packet. There they are. Um Damn. we always, so we always receive that and then um, this is just a notification to the town as an abutter of the um, Quan Quan who wants to construct a storage building. The town is an abutter mm -hmm. um, via the via the cemetery. Okay. So cemetery. this isn't relevant to their other no, yeah, issue. No, no it's just, it's just a, a notice that was sent to the town. Okay, well, I'm going to adjourn. adjourn this meeting. Yeah, okay. well, I'm so good. One of those is a second. Um, all those in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Thank you very much, everybody. Thank you.